Hello, my name is uh, Luis Cabral. I am a professor of economics at NYU, and I'm also the uh, chair of the economics department at NYU Stern School of Business. I am originally from Portugal, born and raised in Lisbon. I moved to the US in 1985 to study for my PhD at Stanford University. And I have taught at a variety of universities in Portugal, England, and in the US. I've been at NYU since 2000. My uh, field of study is industrial organization, and that is, uh, broadly speaking, the study of markets, uh, in particular how firms compete in markets. Uh, it is essentially what microeconomics is all about, but it's a, a focus on the study of markets that is important enough to justify a separate field, so we call that industrial organization. It's important for a variety of reasons. Uh, one is uh, competition policy, so to try to um, study, but also think of public policy towards uh, well-behaved markets from a competition point of view. Um, it's also important from the point of view of strategy. If you are, or if you consult with a firm in a market and you want to understand how to better compete against other firms, so the field of industrial organization which incorporates a lot of applied game theory can also be a useful, a useful uh, field of analysis and, and study. So one of the uh, things that I enjoyed uh, in my um, academic career the most was probably writing a textbook. It's called Introduction to Industrial Organization, uh, published by MIT Press in 2000, and there's a second edition of the book in uh, 2017. The main reason why I decided to write the book, to be quite frank, is that I did not like the books that existed at a time when I started teaching industrial organization back in the 1990s, early 1990s. I first wrote a series of uh, lecture notes, in Portuguese in fact, um, and eventually I translated those into English and, and out came this book in, uh, in the year 2000. It's an introductory book, so it's at a very uh, basic level for those interested in industrial organization. And some people ask me, well, it must be easy to write that because it's so basic. And the opposite is true, precisely because it's uh, uh, supposed to be such an entry-level textbook. It requires a lot more work than writing a scientific paper uh, for uh, uh, my peers who are doing similar uh, research that I'm doing. Um, in other words, trying to explain complicated concepts that researchers have worked on for years in a language and at a level that is accessible to someone who does not have a lot of background in this organization uh, is particularly difficult. At least I found it particularly difficult and it requires uh, um, requires that you put yourself in the shoes of someone who has never um, read or studied or thought about some of these concepts and try to present that in a way they can understand. So that was an interesting challenge, but it's one that I enjoyed. Uh, it's largely based on me teaching undergraduate students, uh, first at Stanford, then at uh, Nova here in Lisbon, then at the London School of Economics, and eventually um, in the, back in the US at uh, Berkeley, Yale, and NYU, of course. Um, the other, thing that I decided to do when I wrote this textbook was to um, try to make it an issue-driven textbook rather than a literature-driven. What, what I mean by that is, is I found that many textbooks were very much based on, oh, so-and-so said this and so-and-so wrote the paper about that and, and so forth. And I realized that most students, in particular most undergraduate students, are not particularly interested in knowing who wrote what when. In fact, they don't plan on becoming economists. They are primarily interested in understanding what are interesting issues that go on in, in markets and in industries and how firms compete with each other and how does economics uh, ab address those issues, what economics has to say about those. So that requires an additional difficulty because instead of simply summarizing research done by others, you have to try and break it down into bits and try to understand what is essential about the research that was done um, and how does it actually deal with issues rather than simply talking about um, economic modeling and economic principles, economic developments, economic propositions, and so forth. So 
It was a difficult task, but I think it was an extremely rewarding task. The book by now has been translated in quite a number of, of languages. Um, if I recall, Greek, Italian, Russian, Chinese. Uh, it's now being translated into Japanese, uh, Spanish, and uh, perhaps one day there will be also a Portuguese translation. There's still a, uh, the original lecture notes in Portuguese, but the, book, the, the, the actual textbook still has not been published in Portuguese. Maybe it will be in one, one day. And I think it's very rewarding to see that uh, your work has been appreciated, continues to be appreciated by uh, people throughout the world. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of universities that, at least that I know, because they tell me, uh, um, that have adopted the textbook um, and that have touched in some way uh, thousands and thousands of students throughout the world and throughout the past uh, 20 years or so. The first edition of Introduction to Industrial Organization came out in year 2000, and there's a second edition of 2017, so that's a 17-year hiatus between the first and the second edition. Uh, why the second edition? Well, I, I did receive quite a lot of feedback, uh, a lot of positive feedback, but also a lot of constructive feedback, uh, feedback with respect to the first edition. Um, one thing that I was a little surprised was, uh, although the textbook was primarily intended for um, undergraduate students in this organization, uh, the book ended up being adopted and used in many master's programs, not only economics master's programs, but also in other areas, including, for example, engineering or public policy and so forth. Um, so those two things led me to um, write or work on a second edition, which uh, had two things. First, it included uh, a little bit of an introduction to economics, already thinking about non-economic students who wanted to use the textbook, because as I said, it's currently being used in a variety of uh, master's programs, uh, in from MBAs to engineering masters, and therefore I wanted to make the book a little more self-contained and allow students who had very little background in economics to be able to use the textbook. So that's one point. And then the second one is that Although the basic principles of I.O., industrial organization, have not changed a lot in 17 years, the world has. And so many of the examples that I had included in the 2000 edition had to be revised. That turned out to be a lot more work than I had anticipated. And so I started working on that revision maybe, maybe around 2013, 2012. So it took me about five or six years no, four or five years, I forget exactly. It took me quite a while to work on that second edition, but I think it was a worthwhile effort, and the feedback I have received since 2017 uh, has been fairly positive. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we just now have um, Japanese and uh, most likely a Spanish translation um, uh, underway, which will be coming out in, 2020, in 2020. So I kind of look forward to continue working on it, and I look forward to continuing helping uh, students throughout the world uh, get interested in industrial organization.